All right, class. Uh, today, let's cover joint immobilization and longbow immobilization. When you look at the skill sheet, go ahead and flip to your skill sheet. We'll cover joint immobilization first. Everything's pretty standard up until you get to the indications. Uh, remember, a sling is what is holding the arm up, and a swath is what's holding the arm to the body. Just don't forget that. For assessment treatment indicators, indications, injury to a joint, of course. Obvious deformity to a joint, contraindications, no relative contraindications. So not really much to explain there. Let's take a look at the procedure. BSI, pen man, need for C-spine. If a joint is broken, and then we're gonna cover long bone here in a second. What was the mechanism of injury? So you have to kind of take a look at that to determine need for C-spine. You locate the injured joint by asking the person you know, hey, why did you call us today? What does it hurt? What does it radiate? All those questions to determine the injury point. You direct your partner to manually stabilize the injury, assess bilateral PMSCs. If PMSCs are not present, reposition extremity one time into anatomical position attempting to regain PMSCs. Select the appropriate or proper splinting materials. So for a joint, don't forget you're going to immobilize the long bone above and long bone below so for instance if your elbow is broken that's a joint right what's the long bone above the humerus you have to stabilize the humerus the joint of course and then the long bone below in this case there's two the radius ulna so make sure the splint is long enough to immobilize those three points there long bone above long bone below and then of course the joint Okay, so that's what it, it means, number six, where it says measure splint for the injured extremity. Then next step is to apply the splint to the injured extremity. It's a psychomotor skill exam, so you'll have to go ahead and apply the splint. Uh, do not cause gross movement. You can ask the patient to hold their arm in position of comfort and kind of assist you while you're doing that. Fill the voids between the splint and extremity. That's just to avoid the movement. So you're just going to place some padding, uh, two by four, four by four, some gauze, uh, cloth, whatever the case may be to kind of fill the voids. Immobilize the bone above, bone, bone below the injury site. We kind of talked about that already. Secure the entire extremity using the sling and swath method. Again, the sling is what's keeping it, holding it up and the swath is holding it to the body. So it's not swinging outward. You reassess pulse motor functions you reassess the PMSCs and you verbalize transport. All right, next we're gonna cover long bone immobilization. Uh, you got your equipment list there, your assessment and treatment indicators, indications, any suspected fracture to a long bone, obvious deformity to a long bone, contraindication, no relative contraindications. So the procedure, let's take a look at that. The BSI pen man need for C-spine, again, based on the mechanism of injury, it was enough trauma to break a bone, so does the patient need C-spine immobilization? Locate the injured extremity, direct the partner to manually stabilize the extremity. No explanation needed so far. Assess bilateral PMSCs. If PMSCs are compromised, reposition extremity one time to anatomical position and attempt to regain PMSCs. We kind of talked about that with the joint immobilization. Measure splint for injured extremity. Measure the splint on the injured extremity. And for this, for the long bone, you're going to stabilize the joint above, the injury site, and then the joint below. Apply the splint to the injured extremity. Do not cause gross movement. Fill the voids between extremity and splint. When securing the splint, do not cover the injury site. Always splint in a position of function. And again, number seven, immobilize joint above, joint below the injury site. So we'll give an example here. Say your uh, radius bone is broken. That's the injury site. What's the joint above? The elbow. So the splint has to go past the elbow, up the humerus, right? Because it's stabilizing that elbow. If it's too short and the splint stops at the elbow, it's not going to secure that elbow because you could freely move the joint. So it has to wrap around, past the elbow, up the humerus, so it secures that joint above. 
The joint below is the wrist, same thing. The splint can't stop at the wrist because they'd be able to manipulate your wrist, right? So it's gotta go past the wrist to secure that joint. It says, secures entire extremity. Upper extremity should be secured to torso as indicated. Lower extremity should be secured to the backboard if patient requires C-spine immobilization. Lower extremity, we're talking about the legs, of course. So what's long bone for the legs? You've got the tibia fibula and also the femur. Uh, for a femur, you're going to use a traction splint. For tibia fibula, you're going to use maybe a, a cardboard splint or a, you know, something appropriate. Then you reassess bilateral pulse, motor, sensory, and cap refill PMSCs, and then you verbalize transport.